design is impossible without the standard cell. The word count is only two for standard cell. In contrast, it's the most voluminous IP package in the entire IP domain. What's inside the standard cells? Let's have a look. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. Standard cell as a building block of ASIC design. Standard cell and general introduction. IP classification and the position of standard cell in the entire IP classification. What's inside the standard cell library? We'll talk about views under the front end. We'll talk about the front end views of standard cells. Then we'll talk about the back end views of the standard cells. We will talk about multiple variation occurring due to the variation in track, threshold voltage and drive strength of standard cells. Finally, we will summarize. So that's the menu for today. Let's begin. Standard cells, the building block of ASIC design. So in this slide, we will go through a short and sweet infographics which will clear your mind about what the standard cell is and these infographics have the analogy with respect to the actual VLSI design. Now from childhood you are maybe familiar with the Lego blocks which you can join and construct different shape and size by yourself. Standard cell are the similar representation like the Lego blocks in the hip design, more specifically in the ASIC design. Now, in your childhood, you used to assemble different shape and size of the Lego blocks to make a particular desired shape. In the chip design process, the engineers, they make the design with various cells present in the entire standard cell library to make a system on chip, that is a SOC. Now, once the design process is done, your SOC, that is system on chip, is done. Here in the final picture, you can see that there are several Lego blocks of different color and shapes and they are arranged in a particular way. So they fill the entire area and this is very much similar to the chip that you make where the entire area is filled up by different IPs majority of them come from the standard cell now the whole picture is in front of you we have the lego blocks that is the standard cell we have chip designer who are assembling the blocks in the topmost picture that is we are undergoing the chip design process and finally the chip is made with the assembly of the standard cells obviously we have many other ips that are needed to create the soc not only the standard cell however standard cell have the lion share of the entire SOC footprint. So that's all folks for this particular slide. Let us move on to the next slide. Standard cell, a general introduction. Standard cell libraries are required by all tools used in the ASIC design, RTL to GDS to flow. So the standard cell come in a package and that package can be read by any of the design tools, whether it is a front end or back end, they all can read these standard cells because these are the building blocks. Any tool that is trying to contribute in a SOC design, they have to read them. It contains primitive cells as well as complex cells too. Primitive cells means and or not this kind of cells. And also we have multiple combination and some advanced cells also. Standard cells are designed by variation of power, performance and area. So whenever you receive any standard cell package, somewhere in the documentation you will find that there is a power performance area figure of merit is there. And this comes from the wide variation across various design parameters. For each cell, a variety of drive strengths are present. Very much important because sometimes it needs some amount of drivability and some other times we need more drivability. So this way there will be multiple drivability present. Inverters and buffers have much larger drive strengths varieties than any outer cells. Cells contain balanced rise and fall delays. This is another important point. 
cell with delay variation present in the standard cell distribution to aid the fixing of static timing analysis violation. The standard cell heights, that is more precisely the dimensions, are denoted by track. These variations may be 70, 11, 3. These kind of numbers will be there inside your standard cell library. The distance between the two consecutive track is called pitch. So here in this slide, I have given a quick snapshot of what you can expect in a standard cell library. What are the different terminologies that are usually present? Obviously, there will be wide variation around this, around any particular terminology. However, you have to know which particular terminologies you have to look for. And then once you have the terminologies found in the actual standard cell library, then you can pivot upon them and move around to see the variations. So that's all folks. We are done with this slide. Move on to the next slide. IP classification and position of standard cells. Here, I will go through the IP classification. After the entire slide is populated with infographics, I will talk a bit more. First, the classification starts with foundation IPs. Here, we can expect standard cell library, IO, SRAM, DRAM, BRAM, ENVM, ARM code, etc. Next, we have the standard based IPs and in this category we can expect USB, PHY, SATA, PCIe, SDE, MMC, all these kind of IPs. And in the third category that is application specific IP, we can expect MP3, MPEG, video cam, all these kind of IPs. Now the entire classification is in front of you as a distribution point of view when you reach out to any ip vendor or your foundry they will tell you okay which particular kind of distribution you would like to have so you say we need a foundation ip or we need a standard based ip or we need application specific ip so these terminologies you will find there at this kind of point of interaction standard cell libraries lies in the foundation ip distribution so to get the standard cell libraries either from the Foundry or from the IP vendor, you have to ask for the foundation IP and only then you will reach out to standard cell library. So that's all folks with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. What's inside the standard cell library? First, we have the basic logic gates that is and or not. We have the half adder, full adder, not to mention definitely we will have many combination of the primitive gates as a advanced gates, which will be also present in the standard cell library. Then we have marks. We have ECO cells. These are cells which are specifically used during the engineering change order of the backend. Then we have tie cells. These are used to tie either to the positive or negative power supply. We have AOI and OAI type of cells. These are very common. That's why I have mentioned the name and or invert or or and invert. Flip flop. We have variety of flip flops in the standard cell distribution. Also, we have some special flip flops which are called scan flip flop and these are related to the DFT that is designed for testability. These are special flip flops. They are used only in DFT and nowhere else. Then we have various type of latches. We do have the filler cells. These are used in the backend part. We have tap cells. We have end cap cells. We have decap cells. We have clock cells. And this is one of the most important part because in digital circuit, more precisely in the synchronous circuits, we need clocks and clock related cells. They will be present there. So I tried to capture that main category of various kinds of cells that you may expect in a standard cell library. There might be some other customized variety and time to time and technology node to node there may be some node specific that is technology node specific cells may be there present because of the fabrication challenges or kind of need very much specific to that particular technology node. We are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide. Now, before going any further, I will show you the VLSI design flow main categorization. That is, the entire flow can be divided into the front end part and the 
backend part so this is true for both analog design as well as the digital design however here since we are dealing with the standard cell we will stick to the digital design part and in the next two slides we will talk about front end and the back end views of the standard cell standard cell the front end views so in a standard cell package you may expect some front end views so let us get familiar with them these are mainly the rtl views specifically there could be verilog views some verilog views or VHDL views. Now, apart from this, there could be DB, which is tool specific. I think Synopsys tools use the DB format, SDB, SLDB, and also you may expect the UPF, that is Unified Power Format, or CPF. So, UPF is used by the Synopsys tools, and the CPF is used by the Eden tools. Now, these two particular type of views contribute to the power management, which get along with the RTL views. And also there you can expect another view, which is called OA view, or the OASIS view. So this is, I think, acceptable by multiple tools. And one thing here you are not seeing, that is the timing.lib that will be there. And generally the .lib is a consolidated file. It will contain all the cells inside one single file. And there could be variation of the corner and other factors. So I have made one entire episode on the timing.lib that is present in the STA playlist. Please go ahead and watch from there. Here I have explained in detail. So you can go ahead and see the variation and the detailing. So we are done here with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Standard cell, the backend views. Once the front end is done, we will go to the back end of the ASIC design. And at this stage, what we pick up from the standard cell library are basically the layout related views. There will be mapping file, there will be NDM file. I think NDM file goes with the synopsis tools and GDS2 file. There will be DB, there will be LEF and DEF. This LEF and DEF goes for the cadence tools. There will be OSIS files. There will be CIF files and there will be abstract views. So all these type of views will be present there. Now talking about each of them will make one episode. So I'm not talking about them. If you need details of these views, please mention in the comment and I'll make an episode on them. So we are done with this particular slide. So let's move on to the next slide. Variation track VT drive strength. The standard cell variation, there could be many parameters as I have mentioned in the I think first uh, or the second slide lot of point could be there like on PPA and all. So, however, there are certain variation which are obviously present and I am going to talk about here the track, PT and drive strength. 70, 80 standard cells are used for area efficiency. We are talking about the track, track I, I have already defined in first or second slide. Well, now, let's talk about the variations only. 90, 10 T standard cells are used for reasonable area performance trade-off. 11 T, 12 T standard cells are used for performance while having high leakage of it is taken into consideration. These are the typical range of variation that you can expect. There could be something in between or the number as is or some plus minus. So that will be as per your boundary or the IP vendor. Now talking about multiple drives, each cell will have various sized output stages. Larger output stage, better the driving fan outs or loads. Smaller the drive strength, less area leakage and input capacity. Multi-threshold, that is empty CMOS cells. A single additional mask can provide more or less doping in a transistor channel, shifting the threshold voltage. How we make different thresholds in the actual CMOS or rather than the NMOS and PMOS present inside the CMOS combination. And this is another kind of variation that you should expect in any of the standard cell variation. Most libraries provide equivalent cells with three VTs, LVT, HVT, and UHVT. There could be many more variations as per the IP vendor, as per the foundry, because of the technology node, and there could be many factors due to which you may expect different variation in VTs. Generally, these VTs variation of the cell, say one cell, it will be there a LVT variation, it will have a HVT variation and it will be having a UHVT variation. So these are basically serve the purpose of the speed versus leakage trade-off. Now, LVT stands for low VT, HVT is 
IVT and EHVT is ultra high VT. So these kind of names you will come across and there will be a lot of names as per the technology node or as per your foundry. There will be names and the I have mentioned a couple of generic names that are there. However, you will find specific names as per the foundry or the technology node uh, variation. However, these names are good to start with. All the threshold varieties have some footprint and therefore can be swapped without any placement or routing iterations. So when we are doing some changes in the circuit, as per the speed versus leakage trade-off, we can switch from LVT to HVT or HVT to UHVT, any of the variation. So it will not impact the footprint and it will there will be just the purpose that is the speed versus leakage trade-off means the need. That is either the speed or the leakage as per the need we can switch from one vt to another vt without changing the footprint so here in this slide we have talked about the most obvious variations that you will find in a standard cell library obviously i have talked also some parameters on which you can pivot upon and make various variations of the standard cell in the i think first or second slide so with that knowledge we are done with this particular slide move on to the next slide summary Let us summarize all the things that we have seen. Standard cell library is a collection of basic as well as advanced cells. Now the basic cells may be the primitive cells or the very common cells and the advanced cells could be due to the technology node or as per the design need or as per your speed versus leakage trade off or something like so the advanced cells could be coming from various reasons. Standard cell will contain consolidated timing library for all the cells. So one dot lib file will contain all the cells having similar type of data. And there could be even variation of the timing dot lib based on various parameters. It is not that you will get a single file. There will be more than one file of the dot lib and they will contain variation. However, each file will contain the timing details of the all cell present in the dot lib. One particular cell will have multiple views and variation based on the parameters like track, VT or drive strength. We have just talked about in the previous slide, so I will not talk about much here since we are summarizing here. Volume wise, the standard cells are the biggest IP collection under the foundation IPs. We have seen the categorization of the different kind of uh, IPs that you can have the variation based on the distribution type and inside the foundation IPs we find the standard cell and these are the biggest chunk of IPs inside the foundation. IP. Without the standard cell library the digital VLSI SOC design is impossible. Yes this is the most important. You have to design a VLSI SOC chip. You cannot do without having the standard cell library. This is I think the most important line coming at the last of this present and we are done with this summary so let's move on. Thank you very much for watching up to this point. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislike. Put that in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.